I think everything should be okay. So I'm, I'm, I start recording the Shiliva and then to present this. To this. So just have a look at you put your screen, or if it's not in your screen, maybe you have uh, downloaded it already. So this actually is the full answer to the question which I have um, uh, given to you earlier. Okay, the other uh, question on Papa and Zelina. Actually, if you look at this question, if you look at this question, Papa and Zelina, okay, let's go down. You look at this question, so I just read through the question first, read through. Papa promised Zelina that he would transfer the ownership of his Mercedes Benz car to Zelina if she obtained 7A+. Plus. For her SPM. But upon obtaining 7A, plus, Papa transferred his Mercedes Benz car to Zerina. She was 17 years, 3 months old at that time. So while waiting for her SPM result, she received a proposal of marriage from Dato Abu's family. Together with the said proposal, Dato Abu's family handed a ring, a set of clothing, and a dowry of 10,000 ringgit. Okay? Advised all parties accordingly. So first of all, what we need to do, we need to identify the issue in this question. So just have a look how I identify the issue. So this issue and law which you are, have identified, you put it in this in this part, numbering style. Okay. So you are going to just identify it in the point form. Identify the law in point form. No need to elaborate because no marks will be given on this. Because the purpose of doing this identifying this issue and law so that it will be, become your guide. It will act like your GPS while you are answering the said question. So that's why it's very important to have this. Satu sangat penting sebab dia akan menjadi you punya GPS as your guideline. So tak perlu huraikan panjang-panjang, no need to elaborate on this at all. So there are students who are elaborating on this, no need. So just have a look how I identify it. So the question above have five issues, and since it has five issues, meaning it will involve five law. Akan melibatkan lima undang-undang. When I say law, law is pertaining to statute you are going to uh, to state in your answer, and also the cases which you are going to state in your answer. So this is known as the law. Okay. So when we read the question, you know that. Where you see that Zurina is 17 years old. So we know that the issue of capacity arises. Right Terus kita nampak issue capacity, kan? Yeah, because of the age. So we know that this is the main issue. So now, once we know that this there are issue of capacity, what else did we identify there? So the age is 70, uh, 17 years old and she involved in this uh, contract of yeah, of uh, transferring a Mercedes Benz car. So now we need to see whether this contract is valid or not. So we are going to go further so under that situation. You know that she's 17 years old. The issue whether exceptions to the age of majority act will come in. Okay, so we so we just jot down the point here that as issue number one. This is the main issue we are going to discuss. Okay. And number two, so we know that this contract between Zurina and Papa, the Mercedes Benz, so there is no consideration. Maybe there is no consideration because we don't see any material consideration given, no money involved. Okay. However, we know that Papa had already informed Zurina she has to get 7A plus. Okay. So can this be considered as consideration? Is it a good consideration? So the question now, if this can be considered as consideration, what kind of consideration is this? So this is an executed consideration because Zerina need to perform first. Okay. And whether this consideration, is it adequate? Whether the 7A plus compare with the car, the Mercedes Benz, whether this is an adequate consideration. So now this is the issue that we identify here. So now what is the the, the law involved? So we have cases here, Pang Kim, 
Okay, and then if you said this now, this is not a good consideration. Then we have in the case of Tanto Sim, we have section 26A, uh, which is, uh, we will be discussing on natural love and affection. This is the law involved. So jot this down as the second issue. Okay, because we identified that. So now we go on for the whether there are other issues also we can identify. So we know that Papa and Durina are actually father and daughter. Okay, Papa dan juga anak perempuan. So because if this is father and daughter, yes, for consideration, we said that we can use natural love and affection. So what about the intention? Whether there is an intention in the part of the father when he said that he wanted to give that car, okay? If Durina obtained 7A, is this, is, is, is this a good contract, good consideration under that state contract? Whether it shows that whether Papa is serious or not, then we look back to the question. The question says that Durina did obtain 7A plus and Papa transferred. So we see that the word transferred, it has ED there, meaning it's past tense. Meaning he, he already did it. It had already been done by Papa. And it involved a vehicle. And we know that for a vehicle to be able to be transferred, meaning the name inside the document of the state vehicle now is under the Dina name. So meaning a lot of documentation needs to be done and Papa had already completed all this documentation. So does it show that Papa is really serious under this situation? So we know it is a family domestic agreement. However, whether there is an intention to be bounded by contract, so we take the case of merit versus merit, comparing with the case of buffer versus buffer, because buffer versus buffer, there is no further step taken. Yeah, comparing to the case of merit versus merit, there is a document involved there. So we are going to compare this case with the case of Papa. So this is the third issue. Okay, we drop down the third issue and we go on for the. So we go on with the second part of the contract. So we know that, uh, second part of the question, we know that this question is divided into two parts. So the first part is between Papa and Zurina, whereas the second part is between Zurina and Dato Abu's family. So the second part of the question, so whether the proposal made by Dato Abu, uh, whether the proposal made by Dato Abu is is, is this a good proposal to Zurina? Because again, she is 17 years old. So again, we need to decide whether this falls under the exception of contract, or the exception under the Age of Majority Act. So the under Age of Majority Act, again, we have the case of Rajaswari when pertaining to marriage. So this will be a good contract. So jot down that we are fully aware of this as number four and the case that we are going to refer to. Yeah, so the, the law that we are going to refer to is actually the Age of Majority Act, the, the exception to the Age of Majority Act, and the case we are going to refer to is Rajaswari and another versus Bala Krishnan. Okay, that is issue number, five, number four. And then, again, we look at the uh, second contract entered by the Drina. This is the contract of marriage just now between Drina and Dato Abu. So, whether there is a good acceptance on the part of Zulina. Okay? So, we know that an acceptance needs to be communicated. We are fully aware of that. We are fully aware that silence is not a good acceptance and nowhere it shows that Zulina did something to show that she accepted the state contract. Okay, so, put that, we are aware of this. Put, put that, put a joke down there and under issue acceptance that this is the issue we have identified. Silence is not a good acceptance and the case is well out versus Binli. So, however, we know that there is an exception to acceptance. So, under exception of acceptance, where it says, if, let's say, the proposal, the together with the offer, there is a consideration, yeah, which is being made together with the offer, then the case of purposing will come to so we know that this needs to be decided. Okay. So we have identified all the five issues. 
Okay, kita dah jumpa lima lima isu tu, kita letak kat sana sebagai kita punya GPS. We are going to put that as our GPS. Okay. So, why actually this one is not considered as an issue? So, I realise that students, there are students who put this as an issue. Why invitation to treat is not an issue? Why offer to a specific person is not an issue? Why communication of offer is not an issue? Consideration did not move from the promise is not an issue. Why contract of necessity under section 59 is also not an issue. So I have elaborate here what I said is not an issue here. So what did I state here? I said, okay. So number one, I said that, okay, clearly that is already an offer by Papa to Zurina. And Zurina is specific purpose person. And Papa is making this offer to a specific person, to Zurina. Okay? And Zurina is fully aware of this offer. And because of that, what she did, she accepted it by performing the condition to the state offer. Just like the case of Kali versus Kaburit Mok Bohan. Okay? So that's why it's not an issue. Because if you look at the question, okay? It had already been performed. Zurina is fully aware. So because she is aware, so that's why she performed the state condition to the state of course. So that's why it's not an issue. Okay. And then there are students discussing saying that okay, it involves um, consideration from a uh, from person who actually is not the promise. So nowhere under the question it involves consideration from a stranger. The consideration is actually from Papa and Zulina. And both of them is actually the party to the state contract. So there is no other person involved in the state contract. And because of that, the case of the Kata Chinaya will not come in under this question, will not be discussed here. Consideration yeah, need, not from the, uh, need not come from the promise will not be discussed here. Because this is not an issue. Because from the question you said, you can see that it only involves two person. Who is the operator and the operator, which is actually Papa and Zoo. Okay, so that's why this is not an issue. As to necessity, so there's a lot of questions, a lot of students uh, discuss on necessity on section 69 saying that we need to uh, consider whether the Mercedes ban, whether it is actually a necessity to Zurina or, to Zurina or not. Okay. So why actually this is not an issue here? Because Zurina did not conduct a breach of contract. So under all situations, under the case of National Shetinan, under Gusharan Singh, it is the minor who breached the contract. When the minor breached the contract, okay, then only it becomes an issue because he wanted to claim the performance from the minor. Faham tak maksud saya? Ya dalam case Zurina, Ya, Zurina tidak melanggar kontrak tersebut. Ya? So, dalam kes National Research Iman, dan dalam kes Gujaran Singh, mereka telah melanggar kontrak. Dan bila mereka melanggar kontrak, minor ini akan disaman kerana akan dipaksa dia are going to be forced to perform the state contract. So, in the case of Zurina, there is no breach of contrak. Tak ada pelanggaran kontrak. Zurina did perform her obligation under the contract. She perform. She had already obtained the 7A plus. So because of that, because of that, the issue of necessity is not an, an issue here. Bukanlah satu issue di, di sini. So that's why, so nothing will be discussed on that. Okay. So now we go on the application. So just now I told you, whatever issue, whatever law you have identified, you just list it down, list it down. The marks will not be given on that. It just will act like a GPS view. So now I'm going to start giving you marks. Sekarang barulah markah you kira. Eh? So for issue number one, you put it as number one, you are going to discuss it at number one. So you are going to inform the examiner that the question comprises of two situations which involve the law that you need to consider. The first one is the contract between Zurina and Papa and you are going to discuss the first situation first. Year. Okay, you inform the examiner you are going to do that. Okay. So, issue and law number one, you're going to discuss here. So, you're going to elaborate. 
on the uh, law you have identified is section 11 okay and the age of majority act so you are fully aware you are trying to tell the examiner you are fully you are fully aware that under the law only a person of full age both 18 years old can enter into a contract and you are fully aware of this you are you are telling the examiner you are fully aware of that you are telling the examiner that you know you are under the age of majority act only a person of 18 years old can enter into a contract you are you are also telling the examiner you are fully aware of the effect of the contract entered into by a minor by referring to the case of Mohamed Bibi. so now you are telling the examiner of this however now you go further, you go further, you are telling the examiner, okay, actually under the door, there is an exception to this. There is an exception to this. You are going to tell the examiner to other people, and you are going to highlight on this. And you realize or not, every time, every time there is law involved, and every time there is cases involved, you are going to highlight it. You highlight, you start bold, and you put it in other colors. Don't put it in red. Jangan letak warna merah. Why? Because the examiner is going to mark your paper using red color also. Put in other color. Maybe orange, purple, blue. I'm using blue here. Okay? And highlight it. Highlight it. You see, I highlight it there. I put it in bold. So I bought dalam bold. Huh? And I, 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 I bought the something. Right? So that, so that the examiner won't miss your discussion. Okay? So just now, you told the examiner. You are fully aware of the law. So what is the effect of the law if, let's say, the person who entered into the contract is 18 years old. However, now you are telling the examiner, you are informing the examiner that, however, there is an exception to this. Okay? So now you are going to discuss on the exception. Okay? So you are telling the examiner, however, there is an exception under exception number three, if there is other law. Other law, whereby the age of majority is different, then we are going to give priority to the other law. And you are telling the examiner in Malaysia, yeah, in Malaysia, with regards to this uh, owning a motor transport or uh, obtaining a license, the age is 17 years old. So this law is going to become uh, reality, it's going to, to, to be given priority here. So you're going to use this law. Okay? So now you have finished discussing with regards to issue number one. And once this is done, you're going to get the full mark, which is the three mark there. Okay, from the 20 mark, for this, this is the three mark. And then we go on with the issue number two. <clears throat> so, you are telling the examiner now, so, what happens in the contract between Papa and Zurina? This actually is an executed consideration. You are telling the examiner, actually, there is consideration and this consideration is known as executed consideration and you are telling the examiner why it is known as executed consideration. Okay? So then you are telling the examiner because why is executed consideration? Because we are not going to get that machinist back only after he obtains 7A+. plus. So that's why it's known as executed consideration. Okay? And then you go on telling whether if this is consideration whether this consideration is valid, whether it's an adequate consideration. Adakah dia satu consideration yang sah, yang setara, because whether 7A plus and the Mercedes Benz, whether it can be considered as adequate consideration. And then we go on with the case of Pang Kim. This is the law that you are going to discuss. We said that consideration need not be adequate. So you discuss this case and then you make use of this case to the situation of Zurina. Okay? And then you said that alternatively, you cakap lagi, tapi kata kalah, you said, he let's say, you said that this is not a good consideration. Okay? So we need to remember that we have section 26A of the Contract Act which talks about natural love and affection. Which talks about when contract is being entered between parties who have close relationship. So what about Zurina and Papa? Because they are father and daughter. So can this be taken as close relationship because father uh, father and daughter? And 
you take the case of Tan Su Sin whereby in Tan Su Sin the situation is different because the successor and also the adopted children and the second wife they are not related. Okay, they are not related. So whereas in the case of Jurina she is related to Papa. Not only that, yeah, Papa had already transferred the land. So meaning all the requirement under 26 A had been fulfilled by Papa and Jurina. Okay, so under this situation, sorry students. We have discussed the issue and the law under issue two and uh, under issue and law number two, which you have uh, identified earlier. So if you have identified this, then you are going to get full mark, three marks here. Okay, now you already get six marks yeah, out of 20 marks. Then issue number three and law number three, you will get the invention. Okay, so yes, we are fully aware that Drina and Papa are father and daughter, and whether this is a good and valid contract, whether there is a valid intention here, or whether it's only a social, domestic, and family agreement. So by taking into account the case of Bafo, 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 you said that this is not a valid agreement because it involves social, family, domestic agreement. However, we also have the case of married versus married, whereby the law says it's a good agreement because parties have been separately and then the husband has signed yeah, a piece of paper yeah, saying that he's, he's willing to transfer the house to the wife. So what about Zurina and Papaya? So if you look at the questions, you know that the word transfer yeah, in the question is in past tense, so that it's already been done by Papa. Papa had already fulfilled all the, all the documentation required by the law to make sure that now the name of the car inside document, inside the document is under Zurina's name, meaning the said car had already been registered under Zurina's name. Meaning this shows that the seriousness of Papa in doing the thing, in doing this transferring of the said vehicle is there. So that's why we said here, actually, that is the intention on the part of Papa to be valid by the state contract because of his conduct. So, okay, we go on for the, the second situation. So now I'm informing the examiner that the second situation which, which we are going to consider here is with regards to the contract between Durina and Dato Abu Salim. Okay. We know that uh, Dato Abu is making a proposal to, to Zulina, the proposal of marriage. So we know that she is a minor. So whether this proposal of marriage, there is a good contract between Zurina and Dato Abu. So we know that under the Age of Majority Act, there are an exception with regard to this. With regard to contract pertaining to marriage. And we have a case here, Rajaswari and Balakrishnan, whereby in this case it this contract is a good contract, even though the parties are actually minor, because it falls under this exception. It's just that we wanted to determine the minimum, the minimum age. What is the minimum age whereby the parties can enter into this kind of contract? Okay, and we know that under the exception to the Age of Majority Act, the minimum age actually depends on the custom of the person who entered into the contract. So since Zurina is actually a Muslim, then Sharia law will come in and the minimum age will be Bali. Okay? So if Zurina had reached the, the, the age of Bali, then the contract will be a valid contract if she accepted it. So okay, we go on further. Kita pergi lagi ke bawah, ya. Masih lagi Abu and uh, Dato' Abu and Zurina. So we are fully aware that a minor can enter into a contract of marriage. However, we also need to determine whether Surina had accepted the said proposal done by Dato Abu. So now we are informing the examiner, we are fully aware actually that under the law of contract, if there is an acceptance, acceptance needs to be communicated. Meaning, it needs to be conveyed to the operor. So, meaning, 
Sabrina need to do something to show that actually she accepted the contract. Okay, silent is actually not a good acceptance. And berdiam diri bukanlah satu penerimaan yang baik. So you know that uh, under the case of Felhaut Lucid Gili, kita pun tahu ya dalam kes Felhaut Lucid Gili, uh, whereby it was held that uh, the um, nephew uh, did not make any acceptance because she made quiet and because of that, the, the, the horse does not belong to the uncle because there is uh, no acceptance by the nephew. So it's very clear under Felhaut Lucid Gili, okay? Because it's very clear under section 7B and acceptance need, need to need to uh, be done uh, either if if it's not in writing, it's not being done in a certain format, at least there be, must be an action showing that actually Durina accepted the state offer. So can we say that Durina did not accept the state offer? So under the situation, now we go on and we now we are informing actually the... Uh, Examiner actually, there is an exception to this rule. There is an exception under uh, Section 7B of the Contract Act, whereby there are situations whereby acceptance no need to be communicated to the state of law. Okay? And uh, under exception 3, especially when the proposal, which is Dato Abu, yeah? so when the proposal allows the acceptance yeah, to a consideration which is being offered together with the proposal as a reciprocal promise, meaning if, let's say, something else is being offered with the proposal, this something else is a, is a form of consideration, and this consideration is not written back to the offeror, this will be deemed as a valid acceptance. So we take here the case of Kerpa Singh versus Mariam Singh, whereby under that case, the offer was made by the son, whereby the son had offered a check of 4,000 ringgit as the full settlement of his father's debt, which is double in debt. And the check, and the state check was not returned by Kerpa Singh. And the court states that this is seen as a good acceptance of the offer made by the son of Barianti. So, can this case now use under the Lina situation? Okay, so now we are going to do our conclusion. So our conclusion will be based on our application. So, uh, on, uh, our conclusion will be based on our application. We have five applications. We have, we have identified five issues and we have discussed on this. So, we are going to conclude one by one. By one. All these application and issues. So issue number one here. Okay. So based on the argument, we said that yes, the uh, age of majority is above 70 and under the section to be not 17 years old. However, since we have exceptions under the age of majority act, but if there is other law, then that law is going to be given priority. And under our law, okay, uh, for driving license is 17 years old. So under this situation, the state contract is valid. The, contract, the, the state contract whereby uh, the state car is being given to Zirina is valid. Conclusion number one. Then conclusion number two. So with regard to this consideration, whether it's adequate or not, we said that by referring to the case of Pansi Kim, it doesn't matter whether it's adequate or not, as long as there is consideration, it's good consideration. And then we said that again, we are going to say, uh, we are going to look at whether if there is no consideration, it doesn't matter also, because under Section 26A of this uh, Contract Act, Zurina and Papa they stand in close relationship because father and daughter, and furthermore, uh, Papa had already registered the state uh, Mercedes Benz, and because of that, this is a good consideration and valid contract. Okay, that is conclusion number two. And conclusion number three, as with regard to the intention. So, we know that Papa have fulfilled all his obligation. He has fulfilled all the documents which need to be fulfilled. Uh, until the state vehicle is being transferred into Zirina's name. So, because of that, we are going to take the case of merit versus merit. Which, whereby, under the case, it shows the seriousness of the party. 
because the husband had already signed the state letter. And in this case, Papa also has fulfilled all the documentation required, which is required to be fulfilled. So under this situation, it said that there is a binding intention here. So number four, you have regard to the marriage. So you said here, you're fully aware that Zulina is underage, but then this is a contract of marriage. And a contract of marriage, there is an exception under the Asian Majority Act, and then take it into account the case of the passing versus Baram Singh. I'm sure you got case the passing versus Baram Singh. Uh, sorry, not the case of the passing versus Baram Singh, however, the case of uh, Rajaswari, whereby a minor can enter into a contract of marriage. So because of that, if they say, Zulina did accept this proposal, it will be a good and binding contract. Okay. So lastly, whether asylum is a good acceptance, sama ada berdiam diri itu adalah satu penerimaan yang baik. So, in our conclusion, we have to say that asylum is not a good acceptance, but here, in the case of Kepasi Musa Bariam Singh, clearly shows that if they say with the proposal, there is a consideration we offered with the proposal and the state consideration is not returned back to the state proposal, then we said that there is a valid acceptance. Okay? So here, if Zulina did not return back the state dowry, the state gift given to her, okay, under that situation, this will become a good acceptance and the contract is actually a valid contract so okay students that's all okay uh, for the full answer click for your test okay hopefully it will be of assistance to you so that you will do better for your final assessment